On today's show, we're taking a break and heading to the cabin, where we explore a residence on the lake, visit a local artist inspired by nature, and experience life at the Flora Bora. Hello and welcome to another edition of Max Magazine. I'm your host, Brad Grass, and uh, <laughs> today we're gonna leave the busyness of the city behind. Oh yeah, today it's all about taking it easy and enjoying the view. And that's why in our first story, Max cameras take us to a unique house design with a beautiful landscape in mind. We take you to the house at Last Mountain Lake and meet the owners who knew that that was the place for them. Now can someone hit the walk sign for me, please? I, of course, fell in love with the area because there was what appeared to be less um, architecture, less development um, compared to the other side of the lake. And uh, surely enough, we, we came across this house and there was a for sale sign. So the rest is kind of history. The project was constructed by my parents. It was originally constructed uh, for one of my brothers. So we designed the house really thinking about his needs and the site itself. It's a very simple shape. It's just a square plan um, with the lower level, the main level, and then a hip roof. We really tried to utilize that form and express it on the interior by carving out certain um, areas of space within that by using different uh, truss configurations so that the ceiling plane in some inst instances is flat and in other instances it follows the shape of the hip roof. So you're getting the larger kind of cathedral type uh, ceiling in some areas whereas in others you have a more compressed uh, lower ceiling so that you're focusing outward on a view. This is the house my wife and I would have built for ourselves. It's, it's very much in line with a lot of uh, similar thoughts we have on space, amount of space, uh, its uh, relationship to location. I think it's spaces and landscapes that inspire us. And this house kind of has the best of both worlds. It's built in an area where there are a lot of uh, properties that are used just for summer usage, so a true cabin and a true cottage. Um, yet this uh, house is designed that it can be occupied year round. But certainly the setting uh, or being located in the area that it is, it has a, a connection to that, um, that type of living or embracing uh, that idea of the cabin and the cottage and that's really the, the connection to the landscape from our perspective. So I think that while it's not a true cabin or cottage, it truly tries to capture and bring forward that connection to the landscape and appreciation for it that, uh, that we think you know, ideally all cabins and, and cottages would, would really try to embrace. In the winter, I think the population of Sask Beach is around 76 individuals, but in the summer it explodes to, you know, 1,500 or, or more. Living in a, in, a, in a place like this, it can, be, it can be quite isolating at times, most of the year, and we like it like that because that's the, those are the type of places we're attracted to, and having an autistic son we gravitate to spaces where there's less chaos for him. And uh, 
all in all, even though it's not technically a, a cabin, it has lots of cabin qualities that we, we find ourselves uh, attracted to. The connection to art and, um, and to the environment still resonates and is still a strong part of, uh, a part of that piece. So it, that's been a really um, a pleasurable aspect of, uh, of the, the history and the lineage of the project uh, for us. To know that people who inhabit it now, they, they still appreciate the, the design and the connection to the landscape that it offers and the, uh, hopefully the creativity that it can also uh, influence and bring to their life as well. They worked as a family on this home and they, they brought it to life. And we see it as a family home, so we're just trying to carry on that, that tradition that they started. <laughs>